It took more than wind to stop the new conqueror. The gusty, lusty, hard-drinking, rough-hewn Macedonian. He declared himself the champion of all Hellas, defender of Panhellenism, and of Apollo's shrine at Delphi. And who could say him nay? My father, the king, marches swiftly, I had told my playmates, and his hands are greedy. There will be nothing left to win when we are grown. But I had said it only with my mouth. An echo of my mother's forever goading, and my heart burned a stubborn fire. Now I stood with my head a little on one side, a habit I could not help. Stoneface said, I wasted too much time on reading, especially my beloved Iliad, which lay beneath my pillow as I slept, and hence would have even less patience with my purchase of a secretary and horns of ink and pen, when I should spend every waking moment learning how to govern and to wage relentless war. My mother too, although she was indulgent and sweet and secret rays, ached the most for me to grow swiftly, bear arms, and snatch away some of Philip's glory. I could not grow up half fast enough to please Olympias, Still, I reckoned that she would approve the purchase, if for no other reason than that Philip, were he here, would furiously oppose it. Leaving the Hebrew boy in the corridor, I approached her quarters and drew aside her curtain. She was putting away in its silver cage a serpent twelve feet long with a mottled hide and of a girth more than the upper arm of a heavy man. The snake was called a python, and it had been bought at a wild beast market on the Euxine Sea, and brought to Olympias by a kinsman. Now python was also the name of the holy stone at the great oracle at Delphi, and the priestess who read the auguries was called the Pythoness. Because of this association, I guessed at first sight that the snake would play a part in the orgiastic rich rooms of Olympias' cult of Dionysus, god of the vine. How else did she use it? I did not believe Philip's drunken joke that she slept with it in his absence when it became her husband, but certainly she caressed it with a blissful luck, and when it found its corns about her slim in lovely form, she seemed to pass into rhapsody. Its starting tongue flecked across her lips just before she shut the cage door. Then she turned, her richy look changing to the warmth of mother love as she gazed at me.